Hello and welcome to the Holly Performance Products and AEM EV Everything EV video series. This series of videos will cover everything from safety to parts installations to advanced electronics and communications when converting a vehicle to electric propulsion. We're going to start out with the basics and we'll work our way up over the coming months. Today's topic is safety and includes some basic information about EVs that everyone should learn. To speed up the learning curve, we're going to relate a lot of things in the EV world to internal combustion engines wherever possible. Understanding what you're working on is extremely important when you're dealing with high voltage. It can be dangerous, but with some training and proper equipment, you're going to be prepared to do everything from parts installs to full-blown EV resto swaps. We're going to start with some very basic but very important stuff. If you've worked on any EVs in the past or just checked out under the hood or even the trunk of an EV, you probably saw orange cables everywhere. These are dangerous they may potentially be carrying high voltage in them. Whether we're talking about full EVs or hybrids, anything over 60 volts is considered high voltage, and it has the potential to harm or even kill you. Remember, it's not the volts that get you, it's the amps. The voltage only has to be high enough to travel from point A to point B. Think about it this way. If you touch a 9 volt battery to your tongue, you can feel that electricity travel across it. And if you've ever accidentally set your forearm across a 12 volt car battery when you had a little sweat on it, well then you know it can burn a little bit. If the voltage is high enough to travel across your skin from one fingertip to another, it only takes 50 to 150 milliamps, and that's 0.05 to 1.50 amps to kill you. That's not much considering an EV battery is capable of thousands of amps with voltage anywhere from 400 to 800 volts. Once you're properly trained and have fully de-energized the system and checked voltages, they can be perfectly safe to work on. But until then, use caution. Think of them as high pressure fuel lines. Now, you may think about your internal combustion engine or your ICE car and that it has orange wires in the 12 volt system. And you would be correct. But EVs don't use orange on any wiring except the high voltage system. So please don't get them confused. The takeaway is that when you're wiring an EV conversion from scratch, remember that orange wire is reserved for high voltage only. And we'll go over this in a little more detail in our next video. PPE, or personal protective equipment, is crucial for the safe construction and maintenance of an EV. If the vehicle you're working on has even the smallest possibility of being energized, or if it has recently been de-energized, proper gloves and safety procedures must be followed. Gloves must be special Class Zero certified. The color of the gloves will vary, but the compliance decal on them is orange. There's a date on the gloves, just like this. They're good for 12 months from the original date of manufacture, and then they must be recertified every six months after opening the packaging and putting them into service. While Class Zero gloves will protect you from electrocution, they do not protect from burns, so you must wear an outer set of leather gloves to protect against that. When not in use, they should be stored away from light in a protective bag. Every time you take them out, check the date, inspect them for grease and oil and any cracks or wear, and then check them for air leaks by rolling them, like this. Do not blow into them. Any moisture from your breath can lower their protective value and actually put you at risk. Class double zero gloves do not provide enough protection because transient voltages can exceed their rating, and class one and above gloves are too thick to be of any practical use on automotive applications. So make sure you pick up a pair at class zero. Before putting those gloves on, let's also make sure you remove any metal jewelry, including rings, watches, or even necklaces. Also, make sure your working area is dry and free of any loose objects that could possibly conduct electricity. If you're a shop or just a DIYer, it's a good idea to have at least a basic set of high voltage tools to help you de-energize the system and make sure it's safe before performing any work. One other extremely important tool to have in your arsenal is a good multimeter. This must be rated a Cat 3 or greater at 1000 volts or higher. If you see a CAT2 rating only, it's not good enough, even if the voltage is rated at 1000. This is because the amperage rating of the device is much lower than the CAT3 meter. Make sure that your leads are rated the same or higher as your meter. Just like your hot rod or race car, the entire piece of equipment is only as good as its weakest link. A set of certified leads will say right on the probe. Make sure you check those leads for any cracking or signs of wear as well. You don't want a failure point right in your hands or draped across a fender when you're working on an EV. Now that we've got your attention and interest in working on EVs, let's talk about a few terms that you may have heard that may not be sure what they mean. You've heard of voltage and amps and maybe even seen some of your cordless tool batteries rated in amp hours. What about watt hours? Or how about BMS, PDU, C-rate, or CAN? Well, let's hit a few of the most important ones here so you can get a basic understanding. Let's start with some hardware. 
For the most part, modern EVs use AC motors. Most of these are PMAC, or permanent magnet AC, or ACIM, AC induction motor. DC is still out there, but for the most part, DC motors aren't efficient enough for a streetcar. They have a little more instant torque than AC motors, but generally they don't have the RPM capabilities that an AC motor has. And as you know, wider power band means better drivability and more top speed without a lot of gear changing. A BMS is a battery management system. It has a lot of jobs, but its main one is to regulate the charging and discharging of each individual cell in the battery modules to make sure that all the cells in a pack are evenly charged and discharged. There can be hundreds of cells in a pack, so keeping them evenly charged is really important for longevity and repeated performance of your battery pack. A PDU is a power distribution unit. It acts as a smart fuse block that turns different high power devices on the vehicle on and off. A VCU is like an ECU in an ICE car, but so much more. Where an ICE ECU controls the engine, an EV's VCU controls the motor and oversees all of the systems on an EV to ensure consistent performance, reliability, and safety. The inverter is what drives the AC motor. It takes DC voltage from the battery and converts it to AC. These are in everything from golf carts to larger units that power cars like the Testang, the Huff Dragster, and the Cobra Jet 1400. So what's an OBC? Well, an OBC is an onboard charger. The OBC is installed on a vehicle and takes AC from a home outlet or charging station and converts it to DC voltage to charge the battery pack. This is generally called level 1 or level 2 charging, and it's a slower type of charging. DC fast charging, or level 3 charging, is usually found at charging stations. With fast charging, the supplied AC is converted to DC off-board and sent directly to the battery. It's a much faster charging method and it takes special communication between the charger and the battery through the BMS to charge at the correct rate. Otherwise it won't work. Kilowatts. Well, this one's fairly easy. Just remember that kilowatts are just a measurement of power, like horsepower. Almost all electric motors are rated in kilowatts. One horsepower is 0.7457 kilowatt, or one kilowatt is 1.34 horsepower. It can also relate to how fast the battery is charging or discharging. So for EVs, KW is used to express how much power the battery is taking in or putting out at a given moment. Now, kilowatt hours, that's a little trickier. It refers to energy over time. And specifically, one kilowatt hour means that 1,000 watts of power are consumed in one hour. Most commonly, you will hear batteries referred to in KWH. Just look at your monthly electric bill. You generally pay for that electricity in kilowatt hours. While there's more to it, in simplest terms, a battery pack's KWH, or kilowatt hours, means that the battery can deliver its full kilowatt capacity for one hour. And here's how it works. Let's say it takes 25 horsepower to push your EV down the road at 50 miles per hour using a Tesla base drive LDU or large drive unit. We know the LDU's consumption rate at this speed is 375 watt hour per mile. If we were to cruise at that speed, 25 miles an hour, with no hills or other external forces, we could cruise for about 2.67 miles per kilowatt hour of battery capacity, or 80 miles. At that point, our energy is completely depleted. So, for comparison, kilowatt hours are essentially like the size of the gas tank. It's a little more complicated than that, but we're gonna dive deeper into batteries and their C ratings, voltage, and kilowatt hours in a future video. Because while KWH may represent your fuel tank in an ICE car, batteries are like your entire fuel system. The tank, the pump, the lines, the regulator, the injectors, all of it. And that's gonna require a deeper dive. Okay, we've touched on a lot of terminology throughout this video that may be new to some of you. So if you have questions about any of the terms or abbreviations, please ask questions in the comments section below. Our main goal here is to educate you on all the aspects of proper EV conversions so you can safely and confidently build your own or have a thorough understanding of the EV conversion process if you're working with a specialist.